Hi guys, Chef Anthony from Dawn's Appliances here today. Today we're going to go over the dual fuel range, the 60 inch from Wolf with a double griddle. So this one's going to support six, you know, independent burners right here. And, you know, the center griddle, which is kind of the star of the show in this feature and like this cooking apparatus. I mean, it's just a lot of cooking surface area. Now you see this one is brand new and this is what yours is going to look like. This griddle will need to be heated up in three stages. So if you look right here, you know, kind of, and you go under here, this is really where like, you know, the dedications for all the knobs are. They really say, hey, this burner's here, this is here. And now with a griddle this size, it's going to take two burners. So we're going to turn it up and you're going to heat it to 200 degrees. And you see how red there, it's backlit like that. So now we're going to heat this up to 200. And what you're going to want to do is, you know, you're going to get a dark cloth and a little bit of uh, regular oil or vegetable oil. And you're going to want to season this. Okay. So this is what we're doing. It takes three stages to season this. And this, you know, with this cold rolled steel helps it season, helps it cure, and really helps your, in, in the beginning, helps your food prevent from sticking. So now we have it at 200. What we're going to do is we get oil and a cloth and we'll wipe that right on here. And what it's going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to burn off the factory oils, but it's actually going to seal the deal. So first time at 200. So when this light is done, that's 200. Then our second time, we're going to take it up to 350. We'll do that same process with the oil in the rag, and then we'll preheat it to the highest at 450 and do our last one. So it'll take three stages to do that. And then, you know what I mean? You'll cool your griddle down, wipe off any residual oil, and then you'll get ready to use your griddle effectively. So this is first and foremost, you know, on it. If you have any more questions on that, we have other videos on actually seasoning it, but it works out really well. I want to really go over the burners here. So you're really going to see the high powered BTUs on all these burners. So you see the same eye cap size here, here, and here. But here in my left hand corner, that's the smallest eye. So that's really going to give you your lowest output. This is really great for doing finishing sauces, holding things hot, chicken noodle soup, tea kettles things like that, right? But on the mains, really where our high power is. So we're going to see that in a dual stack form. When I say dual stack, it's like picture both my hands like this, two burners here, creating that heat going up. And Wolf does a great job of this. This is two independent pieces coming out. So when I go like this and I turn this burner on, okay, you know, it's going to go up to high, then I'm going to go to our general low, then I push it in again, and I go to the extra simmer in the low. That's really where we're heating that low stack burner and really getting that lowest output, kind of holding it to 190 or 170, depending on the highs and the low. So really, at this stage, you could melt a chocolate bar, keep it really hot, you know what I mean, without scorching anything, red sauce, things like that too, Alfredo. So it really... Wolf really gives you the industry high, but it gives you the industry low on these burners too, which I love dearly, okay? For cleaning purposes, these racks here, so look at the grommets on the bottom. So it has these rubber feet right here. So we don't want to really put this in the dishwasher or anything like that. We want to put this in a laundry tub or your big kitchen sink, some mild soapy water on this, okay? let it dry and really shine it back with a little bit of olive oil and a dark cloth. That'll really, no paper towel on this either. A lot of customers do paper towel. Sometimes those flakes from the paper towel kind of get in here and make this uh, metal look a lot older than it is, okay? Other than that, the, the porcelain bottom here, this is an all sealed system. So you could use a little mild soapy water here, magic eraser, and then really dust it clean with a microfiber towel. That'll be your best bet, okay? <clears throat> Other than that, that really covers the cooktop area. I kind of want to look at the oven and really explain to you where the burners are, where the heat sources are, and kind of what's going on in this oven. So when we open it up, I mean, it's all brand new and shiny and clean. We love this. So I'll pull out this glide rack. See how arced the, this rack is? That's how the back of this oven is. So it's a very arced system. You figure in the corners there, they've moved those convection fans. So it's like a vertical system is what they're really calling it. So you're really going to get that vertical air without sacrificing any back space. So think about that. That's our one burner hidden bake element on the bottom. So this is all smooth touch, but there is an element under here. And then on the top, we have our... Um, broiler element as our third heat source. Everybody asks me, chef, 
how do I take these racks out? You're going to see right now, okay? Super easy. The uh, wolf has this little handle holder right here. So we're going to pull it out, extend it out all the way, okay? And now I'm going to take it with my hands. And, you know, obviously when it's cold, we're going to pick it up, glide it towards us, then retract it in so we can grab the other rail and just pull it out nice and easily. See like that? So if you notice, see these teeth right here? This is really, you want this piece on the rail balanced on the other side when we put this in. So let me show you how to put it in. So I just go like this, really start here, and I just cheat these up a little bit. I put this right on top of the rail like that, okay? Make sure it's level, push my hand to glide it all the way back. And if you think this is right, no, you gotta hear it click to go in. See how it clicked like that? Now you know it's in. And the best way to tell it's in is just to extend it all the way out and put your hands on it. If it doesn't fall over or glide, you know you have it in correctly. I've been doing this for a number of years, so I'm really easy at it. Some, some brand new ovens are a little bit tighter, and you'll, you'll see that in brand new. But, you know, just follow the steps. You'll be a pro at it by the end. Okay, while I'm down on this level, I'm going to talk about, we'll talk about this right oven, but, you know, in this mode, both of these ovens do the same thing. So if we go right to gourmet mode, that's the G on here. That's our highlighted um, area. So this is really Wolf's built-in recipe cards and um, everything under here from meat, fish, vegetables, you know, pizza, baked goods. They even have one dish meals. They've expanded on this a lot over the years. And customers really like it because, you know, this is a brand new range. There's a lot of new material to them. So, you know, with cooking guides, it makes life a whole lot easier. It's like having a Chef Anthony in your own home, all right? Minus the bad jokes. So we'll go to meat on this, and then you could touch beef. And then, really, it'll give you steak, roast, tenderloin, prime rib, whatever you really want to cook, or even a slow cooker, but, but like prime rib. And now it's going to ask you the temperature. So do you like it well done? Do you like it medium well? Things of that sort. So, you know, you'll hit done like this, and it's really going to tell you what we're going to do. It'll say no preheat required on rack two, pro position in the thickest part, and it really explains the cooking settings for you. So it is like having a chef in your house. So what we're going to use is the convection roast at 450 for 30 minutes, then roast at 225. Pro is going to be set to 160 and then let it rest, you know, 15 minutes. So Wolf really gives you all the tools here. So when we open our oven door, you know, you're like, where's position two? If you see on the sides here, here's a six, a five, four, three, and a two, and one they suggest we put it on rack placement too. So they really adjusted for, you know, height of, you know, what you're cooking and also the airflow. So they know that, hey, we're cooking a prime rib roast, which is a taller item, put it on a lower shelf so now that air can cross. So it really works out well for all the cooking processes. You know, gourmet's just a feature on there, you know, ton of built-in recipes, but if you take this collar, and you scroll it down, you get the rest of them. So you get the warm method. So now we could turn this into a warming drawer. So if all your food's cooked, say it's the holidays, you have big events, things like that. Now we can go right into the warming mode, keep it warm without overcooking it. That's what I love, you know? The next one is convection roast. And we already touched on that earlier in the gourmet. But the convection roast is going to be all three heat sources. Your broiler element, you know, your bake element, and your convection fan flying all together. My example for that is holiday ham, Thanksgiving turkey, roast, anything like that. Anything you need browning on the top, heat from the bottom, and convection fan to fly all the way through. My next one, and this is my favorite one, hands down, this is convection. This is true European convection. This is multi-use, multi-rack cooking. Anytime we're going to do three trays of cookies, anytime we're going to make more than one item in this oven, we are going to use this convection. And you know how it's convection because it has the little fan icon right next to it. You know, the next two I will talk about are bake and broil. See, there's no fan icon. So that's just our general bake. Kind of the only time I use that is like a cheesecake in a water bath or things of that sort. Regular broil here too is really going to be just to brown things like brown uh, onion soup. You got a pan of mac and cheese. You just want to gratin it, I'll call it. So if you just want to brown some cheese, melt some, make some toast, things like that. That's going to be your setting for that, okay? When we jump into more, here's our connected app. So if you want to connect it to your phone or smart tablet or device, you can to monitor cooking. We go right here. We have the stone setting. So this is where we incorporate the pizza stone. And then, we, you know, our default setting for that should be 450 degrees. 
So now we can add a pizza stone in, have a pizza party, you know, and make some magic. Look at that, it's gonna preheat for us. So we keep going there. Now we have proof, so now we can make any uh, yeast raised dough double in size, which is another great feature. Then you do have the kitschy feature, I love this, of dehydration. So you can make your apple chips, banana chips, beef jerky, and things like that too. There is a separate dehydrator kit to purchase if you would like that. You know, um, it's cool. It actually works out well. The racks work well, and there's like a little stopper that vents the oven door. So it's, it's fun and neat and works really well. That's everything in the more setting, you know, and then we talk about the roast and broil, but that's really a ton of features that are in, you know, your 60 inch range. And I hope, you know, you take all this stuff and you make some magic on your 60 inch range and enjoy the video. Thank you so much.